Hello everyone, welcome to SP Media TV. This is a video of an interview with one of Chief Sunday Igbo's aides, whose name is Ono Lakpo Ademola. Ono Lakpo Ademola is one of the 12 associates of Yoruba Nation agitator Sunday Adeyomo, aka Sunday Igboho, who were recently released on bail from the custody of the Department of State Service. In this interview with Kayo De Ademola, narrates how the secret police raided the Ibadan residence of Igboho in his guest depot style in the midnight of July 1st, 2021, killing two associates and arresting him and other Igboho's aides. Please tell us about yourself. I am Prince Onna Olakbo Ademola by name. I am 32 years old. I am a solar investor expert. I deal in land and real estates. What is your relationship with Sunday Igboho? I am his son and a follower. I am the director of his foundation, Sunday Adeyemo Foundation. For the past two, three years now, I also happen to be one of his media aides before we started the journey of Yoruba Nation. Can you narrate what happened in the midnight of July 1st, 2021 at Chief Sunday Igboho's residence in Soka area of Ibadan? It is an unforgettable day in the history of Yoruba people, because when everyone else was greeted, happy new months, we were greeted in a way we never expected. We were greeted as if we were in a battlefield. We woke up to find ourselves in that mess. It was a misuse of power by the present government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I have been minding my speech about the events of that day because a lot of people are still suffering from psychological trauma. What happened that day alone can take one's life. How did it all happen? My house was not far from Chief Sunday Igboho's house, and being a father to me, I have access to him and he has access to me. He did call me any time to run errands for him. I was in my personal house around 12 a.m., but I had a message to pass across to him, which I could not deliver by phone. I moved from my house to his residence at exactly 12 a.m. and met with him. We discussed till around 1 a.m. and we were outside with one of our people till around 1.30 a.m. In his house, I have a chalet he allocated to me as one of his associates. At exactly 1.30 a.m., he moved into his building, others treated into their home. And I also moved in my own, but exactly 1.35 a.m., I started hearing gunshots and wonder what was happening. My chalet is directly facing the main gate, and I opened the window to peep to see what was happening outside. To my greatest shock, I couldn't see anybody, but I had spodatic fire guns. Whenever I had fire, they would shoot at the building. As a Muslim, I started reciting different verses of the Quran, believing it might be the end of my life. While still peeping through the window, I could see two DSS personnel inside the house. They came through the fence because they could not force their way outside. So some of them jumped the fence and came in to open the gate for the others. When they opened the gate, I saw that they were dressed in black and were putting on helmets. They were dressed like they were on a battleground facing Boko Haram. I heard them calling themselves come in two two. I immediately woke the boy that was with me and I told him that we needed to start preparing for our barrier because there was no way to escape. There were more than 100 personnel inside the building comprising the DSS and soldiers. They shot sporadically everywhere. When they got to any chalet or any of the rooms they fired directly i started praying and i am thankful that god saved my life the shooting continued for three hours when they got to my chalet i opened the door for them they marched on my head on the floor i had collected around three hundred thousand from chief sunday igboho which i wanted to use to buy something the following morning one of the soldiers picked up the money they demanded my gun and i told them do i look like someone who can shoot do i look like someone who can operate a gun they matched my hand until i was handicapped 
They then took me to the gates to lie down there with others. At the gates, to my greatest shock, I saw one of my very good brothers, Sahid Oladems, the chief executive officer of Oladems Motor in Oshogbo, in a pool of blood, likewise afar. We were still together around 12.30 a.m., but the two of them were already gone down. After we were being handcuffed and laid on the floor, they started destroying the vehicles in the compound, threatening to burn down the house and saying all sorts of things. They also made roll call of the people in the house. That was what happened. But to the glory of God, we are here today. The DSS spokesman, Peter Afonanya, said Igbo women engaged the operatives in a gun deal before you guys were overpowered after two of Igbo's aid were gone down. Who among you were firing at DSS men? Nothing of such happened. Nobody retaliated. Nobody exchanged gunshots with them. You know the Nigerian military. If anybody had re retaliated by exchanging gunshots, you know what could have happened. Those they killed did exchange guns with them. Afar was an innocent man. He was killed in the waiting room of Chief Sunday Igboho while he was praying. He was a cleric and he could not see. He was blind. On getting to the waiting room, they just fired straight and gunned him down. Also, Adogon did not in any way exchange gunshots with them. He was shot in the bedroom while he was hiding. What about the narrative that the security agent used a mortal to smash Adogon's head when he refused to die after being shot? Nothing of such happened. He was shot in the bedroom as an eyewitness to the event of that midnight, exactly how many people died. Two people died, Afa and Odogon. Where are their remains? When we were being taken to the DSS office in Abuja from Ibadan, we got to Ekiti together with the office cops. At the DSS office in Ekiti, we noticed that they took the cops of Adogon and Afa away in a Hilos vehicle. So I believe their remains are with the DSS. How many of you were arrested? They arrested 22 people, 12 male and 10 females. When we got to a kitty at the entrance of the DSS office, they freed nine of the ladies after asking every one of them, who is Lady K? So they only took Lady K with the men to Abuja. Out of 12 men, one of us was a police officer, an escort of Adongon. The officer was not paraded in Abuja. Instead, 12 of us, including Lady K, were paraded. Has the officer been released? Yes, he was released before us. There were reports that the DSS picked up some cats found in Igboho's house. CCTV brain bus, among other things. What are the things the DSS took from Igboho's house at night? They took gold, money, our phones, which we are still with them. What went away with the they went away with the CCTV and one of the cats after killing about four or five cats they went away with a big MP3. They went away with a lot of things. They went away with the cats, believing Chief Sunday Igboho turned to the cats. The DSS also claimed in a statement that they recovered some guns and ammunition from Igboho's house that night. How true is that? They are in better position to explain where they got that from. But there was a police officer in the house and he had a gun. Maybe they took the gun of the police officer. Was Igboho at home during that raid? Yes, he was at home. The DSS saw him. They can't deny that because that night they came with three herbalists. After shooting at so many corners of the house, they see him again. So they believe... He was hiding, not knowing he was in the building. Chief Sunday Igboho is not an ordinary man. He is the Akoni Odua of Yoruba land and a real son of Odudua. 
When the DSS could not find him, they brought in their harbalist and they started chanting incantations, wanting him to come back. The harbalist later told the DSS that Baba Igboho had turned to a cat. That was when they started killing the cats. I believe they know he has a metaphysical powers. That was why they came in with Habalis to get him at all costs. But God was not ready to put his life in the hands of the DSS. How did you recognize the Habalist? We are they dominating amulets and charms. They wore ordinary clothes, not traditional attire. But when the DSS could not find Chief Sunday Igboho, they called them in and the Habalist started chanting incantation. What is the number of the security operatives that came for the raid? The DSS operatives were more than 20 and most of them were from Oyo. Why the soldiers were more than 200? I could count about 87 vehicles when they are taking us away. They came with ambulances too, believing they were going to a war zone. How did you know most of the DSS operatives were from Oyo State? After they took us from the house, the number of DSS operatives that followed us to Abuja was reduced drastically. Were the police also involved in the raid? No, only Nigerian army and the DSS came that day. If there were this many security operatives during the raid, as you said, how was Sunday Igboho able to escape? Why you, his aides, could not? I am not fortified with anything. But I believe in the Almighty God. Chief Sunde Igboho is a human being like everyone, but he is a special creature. No one can face what he faced that night and escape. There was a lady in one of their vehicles that was saying, Get him dead or alive from a burden. You were whisked to Abuja the same day you were arrested. Can you briefly narrate your, your ordeal? Why with the secret police? I was there for 62 days. It was part of the sacrifice on going back. It was dishumanizing to be in custody without seeing the sun or the moon for months. Being maltreated, giving food that a dog could not eat, sleeping in bare floor for 62 days, eating in the same place where I defected, the same place where I urinated, the same place where I observed my prayers, we were given 20 naira cow bear and a loaf of bread of less than 50 naira to eat per day. There was no access to lawyers, no access to family members. It was hell. It was a terrible experience which I do not wish for even my enemy. In the DSS custody, what were the offenses the secret police said you committed? Offense? Even if I had committed an offense, is coming in the dead of the midnight to kill us the solution. I did not commit any offense. When you were interrogated in the DSS custody, what were the questions they asked you? They asked me personal questions and my purpose of being in Igboho's house. They also asked for my bank account, Facebook name, and my village address. They also asked me a lot of questions. They asked me to tell them how long I had known Chief Sunday Igboho and I told them, I cannot disown him no matter the situation. We are you kept in an underground cell in DSS custody? The first place we were kept for the first two days in the DSS custody was an underground cell where if anything happened, we couldn't know. From there, we graduated to another cell where we had access to Fulani, how sad it is who don't understand English language. Some of them were suspected bandits and Boko Haram members. There were others who were not Hausa but suspected IPOB members. How many detainees were kept in a single cell with you? Three, it's a small cell with useless settings for three people. One had to sleep by bending. Were you kept with your associates or strangers? We, the 12th of Igboho associate were scattered into various cells. I was detained with canary and Hausa suspects. We didn't understand our individual languages. All that bound us together was Muslim Solat. We couldn't communicate. It was hell. It got to a time that those of us arrested in Chief Sunday Igboho's house couldn't sleep at night. We prayed all through. The Muslims observed a tajdu. Midnight prayers, why the Christians held vigil. How did the Igboho 12 pray together when they were in separate cell? 
we pray by raising our voices, both Christians and Muslims. We shouted to communicate when it was time for prayer. Of course, we recognize our different voices. In all of this, do you have any regrets at all? I suffered for my father's land and I want my people to be liberated. This is a trinical government that has no respect for the rule of law. Have you undergone any medical treatment after your release? I would have died if I had not undergone any medical treatment after my release. You can never be in DSS custody and come back without seeking medical attention. How did you feel that you had been released on bail? There is nothing like freedom, even if you don't have money but can move around. We should be grateful to God for that. So I am grateful to God that I have been released. Three weeks after your arrest, your boss Igboho was also apprehended at an airport in Nebori Kotonu in Benin Republic on July 19, 2021. And since then, he has been behind bars. How do you feel about this development? It is a sad development for us, his followers, that Chief Sunday Igboho, a man of honor and a philanthropist by excellence, was arrested, but there is nothing we could do about it. You claimed Igboho is not an ordinary man, which was why he was able to escape the DSS raid in Ibadan, but he was subsequently apprehended in Kotonou, what do you think went wrong? God understands everything. Do you still believe in Igboho? Despite all that happened, I am 100% with him. Do you still believe in Yoruba nation agitation? No going back. The struggle continues.